I'm your, you know, and in host, um, we have Yuvila, as I said, I said it before, uh, from Fiamma Chain. They're building something really interesting. Um, so yeah, definitely like, you know, great to have you here today. Um, can you please introduce yourself and, you know, what are you building with Fiamma? Uh, how everything, you know, is coming together with the ZKP and how do you guys talk to BitVM too? Thank you, Naruto. Yeah, so uh, I'm Yovella, co-founder of Fiamma. So uh, I previously work in investments at Binance Labs and also investment banking at uh, City. So basically uh, for Fiamma, our goal is to really turn Bitcoin into the foundation for the future decentralized internet and also financial system. Um, so that's, so, so, but that means that we really need to unlock Bitcoin's value, both its network security value and also its capital value. So our team are um, core contributors to BitVM2, which means that we can enable uh, ZK Pro verification on Bitcoin optimistically. And I will share a bit more about the technical details um, about what BitVM2 is and how, you know, how it's related to uh, Fiamma. And so basically our team is also the first team that's implemented BitVM2 and also have the smallest script size. Um, so um, yeah, so we, are, we will first launch our ZK Pro verification layer, uh, leveraging uh, BitVM2. And then on top of it, we will unlock many uh, significant use cases like Trusted Bitcoin Bridge, Bridgeless uh, Interoperability with Bitcoin, um, ZK Indexers or ZK or any roll ups on Bitcoin or any more app chains um, on Bitcoin as well. Um, that's that's really good. And this is like, you know, a question that just came in my mind. Um, why did you choose like, you know, for Bitcoin? You know, like I, I understand that there's a lot of uh, uh, TVL over there, a lot of money logged or, you know, like just a, just a lot, lot of things there. But why do you think like, you know, moving towards Bitcoin is much better? for Fiamma or the Web2 community as a whole? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. So we know that um, I, I've been in this industry since 2021. And then at that time, I, I'm very like Ethereum focused. And then, so at that time, I look into, you know, the layer two solutions, cross-chain bridge, and also ZK technology, but never really thought about anything about Bitcoin because we think that Bitcoin is more like a little bit it's prestigious but ancient you know um in a lot of you know people's mind in crypto um but the reason why we choose to um choose to work and build on bitcoin is really a, a, one of the 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 um the catalyst is the is the bitvm paper uh launched uh by um robin linus so basically it it's trying to what BitVM does is to try to enable any computations on Bitcoin just using its existing opcodes. So which means that we don't need soft work or any modification on Bitcoin. Um, but uh, later we found that BitVM is less feasible. So that's why we have BitVM2. So BitVM2 basically would just focus on enabling um, Bitcoin to verify ZK proof optimistically. And then the ZK proof can um, you know, uh, verify and represent a lot of complicated computation. So that's how we are in enabling Bitcoin to verify th things and then, uh, you know, in enable more diverse use cases directly. Okay. Yeah. And I think um, I've not seen a lot of, you know, similar um, organizations or like, you know, people trying to do what you're trying to achieve and it's actually because it's actually very difficult so you know um congrats on that um let's quickly you know get into how you got into crypto what was your story like because i i see like you, you were saying that you know you you were looking at the l2 solutions so how you got into crypto and then how you started with fiamma um you know where did the whole inspiration come in yeah, that's that's a really good question. So basically, um, I really started like uh, in the beginning of 2021, and I was just uh, started out, uh, you know, researching on NFT back in Tencent, and also I was uh, buying Dogecoin, all, all that kind of stuff. 
and then later uh and then i later i work in balance labs and just look look into uh, more uh, infra focused and then i uh, met my basically my tech founder uh simon online because he's a zkog in asia he wrote a lot of zk articles so that's how we got to know um, each other and have been brainstorming our cool ideas. So now uh, with his expertise in ZK and also, you know, our team's experience in BitVM, um, we really see the value that we can unlock here. Um, so basically, we know that, you know, Bitcoin has trillions of value and it's already it's it's like 2024, but we still don't have a trusted Bitcoin bridge, you know, only only around one there's only one percent of bitcoin that's bridged you know in other ecosystems and just like over 99 percent of them are basically idle so i think that so that means that that there's a lot of opportunity here and and then we we quickly recognized you know the you know the bottleneck here is the lack of a trusted way for bitcoin holders to put their bitcoin to work so that's why you know BitVM, uh, BitVM to really help solve this issue, and then so that's why we work a lot on BitVM too, and also to build ZKP verification layer and trusted Bitcoin bridge, and then more use use cases around this technology. I see. Yeah, um, that's that's definitely nice. So um, you know, I quickly want to get into the technical details as well, because I, you know, like the the whole topic is like Fiamma speaks to the bit VM too. I want to understand like, you know, what you mean with number one speaks with the bit VM too. It's, it's actually pretty good, you know? Um, and then I want to understand the architecture for bit VM to itself, because someone who is an, you know, ETH Maxi, ETH Line. I've never looked into BitVM and probably a lot of community members as well. So what are your thoughts on like, you know, BitVM2, um, how it all works out? Um, and then what about the ZK verification as well? So uh, sorry, there are too many questions, but like, you know, it's a yeah, very interesting. I, yeah, no worries. I got you. Yeah. So basically, um, so for, yeah, I, I always I do. Yeah, I was a uh, East Maxi, you know, like, so I, I think that we got Ethereum and a lot of other blockchain just because people, because Vitalik found that, okay, Bitcoin's great, but it's, it has really limited programmability. It's like not scalable, you know, so that's why we got Ethereum and a lot of other blockchains, but, um, with, but, you know, there's a trade-off, right? So it is, it's, it's, like exactly because of its limited programmability, then we can have a more stable and secure blockchain. So, um, so yeah, so the the so so we have a really cool idea. What if we can okay just keep Bitcoin as the way it is? It's valuable, decentralized, super secure. But meanwhile, we can leverage. We can really unlock its network security value and also uh, unlock its capital value. So that's how, you know, BitVM uh, would become the game changer here. So the, basically how BitVM work is that um, basically um, we, know, we, we know a little bit, def, I think most people would know a little bit about ZK technology, right? We got ZK rollups on Ethereum. So basically what ZK knowledge um, is doing here is that it's compressing, uh, you know, a lot of more comp complicated computations uh, on the ZK rollups, and then um, the Ethereum only need to verify a small constant size ZK proof. So that's why you know ZK rollup can help Ethereum scale a lot. So. With that in mind, we can also use the ZK proof here in the Bitcoin ecosystem as well, as long as we can enable Bitcoin to verify the ZK proof somehow. So here is the question, how can we enable Bitcoin to verify ZK proof? So this, this is what BitVM2 is uh, basically. So basically, first we will need to write the ZK proof um, verifier in Bitcoin script. And then this would be a um, difficult process, but we we made it. And then initially it's around seven gigabytes, but
but after you know a lot of um, optimization, currently we have a really we have the smallest script size in the market. Our Flunk verifier only has 0.875 gigabytes, and for our Girl 16, it's only like 1.3 um, gigabytes. And then you will say that okay, it's still super large, right? How can you uh, let how can you fit that into one block size of of Bitcoin? So that so here is the second step in the BitVM two, which is the fragmentation of the of the uh, the script of the verifier. So basically, we will fragment you know the you know the one point three or point eight seven. Uh, 0.875 gigabytes of verifier into around a thousand pieces so that the um, uh, the input of a subscript would be the output of the last last uh, subscript so basically um, you can enable Bitcoin to verify one specific subscript to tell that if this GK proof is valid or not so that that's why we can enable Bitcoin to verify TK proofs. Yeah, so, so that's how we, we, we made it uh, using BitVM2. And so that um, we can also enable Bitcoin to slash, you know, the any malicious actors uh, uh, with this technology as well. If they identify, okay, this proof is invalid. Okay, that's that's pretty nice. And I think I saw the docs the other day. I was just reading about Fiamma a lot. Um, you guys are also using like different ZKP systems. Is that true? Um, how does like is it a customizable thing, or you know how does that work out? Like which yeah. is the best that you can you know select, or why there are multiple of them? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we know that there are a lot of different types of TK proofs. We have Girl 16, uh, you know, Flong, Circle Star, and also a lot of other newer and more powerful proof systems as well. And for here, we need to think about that, uh, you know, what what proof can be more easily verified on Bitcoin. Uh, so that uh, so we've already finished uh, Gross 16 and also Flunk. And then uh, for the other ones, we can uh, also write new verifiers in Bitcoin script. But meanwhile, we can also support, support them as well. Uh, uh, so basically we can, for instance, for CircleStark or any other uh, proof system, we can just um, convert them using recursion to Girl 16 or Flonk and get it verified uh, by the Bitcoin network. Interesting. That's that's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, I see. And then we have like, you know, the whole, so how I looked up about the components of it, uh, sorry, on the Fiamma chain, you have a mm -hmm. Fiamma core network, then you have Ethereum, uh, ZKP systems, and then you have a DL layer as well. So how are like how are you leveraging you know any DL layer and especially like you know Avail since we have the partnership? How does you know uh, Fiamma leverages the Avail DA? Yeah, I think it's really crucial. So it really can help us unlock more cool and practical use cases with Avail DA. Avail DA, we know that uh, it it only starts with it only starts with the DA, it, right? It's it's just a start. It also has a well nexus and more uh, cool um, cool products coming up. So we we really bullish on the well nexus because a well nexus would enable a seamless cross chain interoperability. Um, so with Fiamma and a well nexus, we can definitely uh, you know unlock more uh, interoperability scenar scenarios. For instance, you can um, you can interoperate with Bitcoin layer one really seamlessly, or you can uh, you know interoperate with um, you know uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Solana, any chains really uh, seamlessly. So how that work is that um, uh, you know that um, theoretically speaking, if there are two chains that both use a well, like for instance, two is layer two. Uh, that use a well as their DA, then definitely these two chains are quite interoperable. Are interoperable with each other just natively through a well DA through a well nexus, right? 
So, but the thing is that when you are trying to enable, you know, uh, some seamless, trustless interoperability between a uh, layer two on Ethereum and also uh, Bitcoin layer one or Solana layer one or with another Bitcoin layer two that doesn't use a well DA, um, then you need, you know, some other other you know channel as well so that's where you know fiamma can help so basically as verification layer we can also help you know aggregate the tk proof received by different chains and also uh from a well as well and then we can also provide a bitcoin network uh security bitcoin network level of security uh for the entire um cross-chain interoperability process so which means that just yeah, put it in a more simple way, then basically, for instance, now you can uh, 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 using Bitcoin to buy a uh, mean coin on Solana, you know, just in one click seamlessly, just with Fiamma and also uh, a well. You can also use Solana to buy, uh, you know, BRC20 on Bitcoin, you know, really trustlessly and also seamlessly uh, with a well and Fiamma. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, so for even for like Avail, right? We have these three products that we have now. Uh, one is Avail a DA, which is already made net. Um, you know, everyone knows data validity, and we do a really good job with the KCG commitments. So definitely, like you know, I'm really bullish on like the DA part. But then one thing that I'm really excited about is Avail Nexus. I recently put out like a whole blog post, which basically talked on how you know the Avail Nexus work. Um, in the world of, you know, like L2 uh, landscape where you have hundreds of thousands of L2s, you know, how they actually talk to each other. So I'm very excited about, about Avail Nexus. And then we have finally Avail Fusion where like you can, you know, stake Bitcoin, Ethereum or anything. So that's the mechanism that we have for um, staking and, you know, uh, economic security of the chain or of the ecosystem. So those are like the major things. But coming back to, you know, you guys coming back to Fiamma, I looked up the architecture as well. And, you know, like definitely looks very cool. Um, there's also like, you know, interaction with Bab Babylon. I think like you're one of the first ones who are building on Babylon or like integrated. Um, yeah, I want to yeah. understand, like, can you explain more on how it works with them? And then what is like, you know, the intersubjective node that you talk about? How does the architecture looks? All those different things. Yeah. So basically, yeah, as mentioned earlier, for Afiyama, our first product is a ZKP verification layer, and this would be the foundation for Trusted Bitcoin Bridge, and then also bridgeless uh, interoperability with Bitcoin and more use cases. And so uh, basically, you can think of it as a proxy of Bitcoin. So we need to ensure that it. It's um it definitely it needs to have this it needs to be as secure as the Bitcoin network, and meanwhile it still it also needs to be super scalable and cost efficient as well. So that's why we have different uh, components in the verification network. So uh, for so basically we have two models. The first is soft finality, and the second is hard finality. And so for soft finality, basically we have a uh, Fiamma chain that's built using Cosmos SDK, so which would help verify ZK proofs um, for the first first round in like in seconds. And for this, it, it's secure uh, through the crypto economic security value of Bitcoin via Babylon. So this is how a uh, Babylon um, play in our system. And then we also have our hard finality module, which consists of a couple hundreds of mobile nodes, and they would verify the proof that's that's already verified by our POS network for the second time. And then if there's any issues, like like what if you know some of the POS node collude, or there are more intersubjective issues that cannot be picked up by the POS network for instance some uh, oracle price feed issues or like some data availability uh, storage data publishing issues this can be picked up by our mobile uh, mobile nodes and then and then if there's any issues then 
uh, a challenge process will be kick off. So that's where BitVM2 will come in and then we will send a transaction uh, to the Bitcoin network uh, directly and Bitcoin will help us to recompute and can help us to compare if the, the result is the same as the result given by uh, the POS node or the mobile node so that uh, you know the malicious actor could be punished directly on the Bitcoin network. So, so you, as you can see that the whole process is secured by the Bitcoin network at the end, but for uh, scalability, uh, we do have like a soft finality module, uh, you know, in seconds. And then for the hard finality module, it only takes around, you know, one to two minutes. So the whole thing is super um, fast and also cost efficient, but also enjoy the network security of the entire, you know, the, of the entire Bitcoin network. I see. Uh, I think that's that's a good process of like, you know, soft finality and hard finality. Um, and then uh, another question that came up, like, you know, just listening to you, um, you have Babylon AVS nodes for the validation, right? Uh, how does that work out? Like, I, 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 um, I see like some of the docs which says like, you know, there's a Babylon AVS node. Um, do you know what's the exact, you know, architecture around that? Yeah. So I think uh, basically it's just uh, Babylon's regular uh, POS chain service. So basically okay. it's leveraging the timestamp time stamping uh, fun function of Bitcoin. So that's how we can yeah. also uh, get uh, security from Bitcoin. And then also mm -hmm. the security level is also dependent on uh on how much TVL, you know, that's delegated to Fiamma. So that's that's why we think that it's still important to have, uh, you know, the VM2 part and the hard finality part so that we can really leverage the, the you know, the security um, of the entire Bitcoin network, not just, you know, not just limited by the TVL that's delegated to us through Babylon. For sure, for sure. Um, so how does it, um, wh where are you in the process right now? You know, like how long have you come into the de development process? Uh, what does the timelines look like for you? Yeah, so uh, we've already implemented the BitVM2, so on both, both Signet and also Bitcoin Minute. So for mm -hmm. our VMA chain um, uh, verification layer for, for this, for this product, our test net will be coming soon. I think in a in a couple of weeks, and then we are also working on uh, on some exciting use cases as well. Like as mentioned earlier, the trusted Bitcoin bridge is a really significant use mm -hmm. use case that we are very excited to unlock. So I think that will also be our next uh, test net launch as well. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so yeah, th uh, that's that's actually pretty good because um, I personally have not like you know used a lot. I'm I'm not too much into the Bitcoin ecosystem, so I would definitely like you know when you guys go test net, I would like to try on what I can do. Uh, but the timeline looks good. Um, yeah, 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 I, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, uh, yeah. So I think that. It's definitely like really valuable, you know, uh, so that how can you still, you know, everyone want to keep holding more Bitcoins, but what if you can really have more yield opportunities that's trustless, that's safe, right? So we know that Babylon really set a good example with the trustless staking. And then, uh, so basically you can earn yields trustlessly by providing, you know, security services to different POS chains. And with Fiamma, you can actually do much more also. Uh, with your Bitcoin, so you can also, for instance, you know, um, you know, serving uh, the bridge, or you know, when you when you bridge your Bitcoin to other ecosystem, you can play with their DeFi, and then you can also play with a stablecoin protocol, GameFi, whatever, or with like bridgeless interoperability. You know, you can also just like you can just buy uh, meme coin or participate in DeFi. Really, uh, just um, trustlessly and also seamlessly. So yeah, so I think that, um, I think you might be interested, yeah. <laughs> no, that, that, that's, 
definitely good. Like because um, ever since like Bitcoin came out, a lot of people just believe, or I think it has changed a little bit, is to hold the Bitcoin. You know, like not to do anything with it, as compared to Ethereum. Um, when NFTs were there, meme coins, ICOs, it was pretty good. Like back in I think 2020, 2021, when NFTs came out, everyone was like so crazy. Um, yeah. You know, just a side topic. Um, what do you think about ordinals then? Like, you know, because um, ordinals are, can we talk to the general population as something like NFT, even though they're not? Um, when ordinals came out first, I was running like a Bitcoin no node. I was very excited about ordinals. What do you think? What are your thoughts about those? Yeah, I think or or you know like and also BRC twenty, there are also some cool innovations in the Bitcoin ecosystem. And then I hope that I definitely hope that it would gain more popularity in the future. It has some hype, you know, uh in the in the last few months. But I think it kind of like cooled down a, a bit recently. Yeah. So I think it's also similar to the NFT cycle as well. So it's just like some, so we have sometimes have a, a couple of months of hype in NFT and then it also cool down. Yeah. But I think that um, we definitely, we can see more. Um, I really want to see that we can financializing uh, Ordinals, BRC20 more and then in a trustless and native way in Bitcoin. And I do think that uh, with better infra, with BitVM2, with our ZK verification layer, we can do also much more with it. Like for instance, we can have ZK indexer that can really help BRC20 to, you know, uh, to to be more like, like to, to be exchanged more securely, be indexed more accurately. And then uh, for ordinal, so what if we can, you know, have you know a exchange also for ordinals in a really trusted way and that's secured by bitcoin network and also by zk technology i think with that and also we can, if we can use ordinals and brc20 in some you know bitcoin native games or bitcoin native defi sure. the kind of yeah innovative applications i think that would be really cool yeah yep yep um that that's pretty good idea so um suppose like you know if i'm an independent dev and i want to build something on top of yama uh what are some of these use cases that you know you guys are looking at you guys are excited about or something uh you know that can be built using fiama tech or like the just uh in general yeah i think uh really in general a really really like straightforward thing is like the use cases i mentioned earlier like trusted bitcoin bridge or like bridges interoperability with bitcoin and also some you know any type of uh zk roll up or roll up on bitcoin so we have a partnership with uh lumos so basically lumos is a zk roll up as a service uh, platform so that anyone can launch roll up really easily uh there and so we can um, definitely, um, you know, do more, do do more roll ups there. And I also I'm very interested. So I'm really looking for some cool app specific idea as well. Like rather than just building more general purpose roll ups. So for instance, you could be more focused on a specific DeFi or like specific game. Or for instance, we have partnership with. Um, with Dolphinus Lab, so uh, so so this project is focused on uh, zk Watson. So basically, it will really um, enable people to build uh, scalable on-chain games um, on the blockchain. So with that, um, so with zk Watson and with our zk verification on Bitcoin and also our trusted Bitcoin bridge, I think that we could have ma many cool things, right? So maybe we can really put BRC20 or like Ordinals, you know, in some Bitcoin native games. So that's something. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. So um, have you ever seen, and I'm, I'm just trying to imagine on how a Bitcoin game slash application would look like. I, I've seen some, you know, Bitcoin L2s and Bitcoin DeFi um, ideas uh, floating around, but how does like an app or, 
you know a game would look yeah. like to you how does it interact with the network it's really interesting yeah so for me i think that uh so for for us because we are providing like a more fundamental infra like zkb verification so so if you just want to have a regular d app you need to deploy on like a bitcoin layer 2 or something um but like for the apps that sp specifically built on top of us and and then I think that you you need to be a basically you need to be a blockchain itself. So it's like as what I mentioned, an app specific chain. So basically, you're like the landlord. You are not like a tenant on the L two. You can just customize the chain the way you want, and then you can just charge whatever gas fee you like, right? You can just you know pick uh, some execute execution framework and then customize it and then build like games or DeFi, social fi or whatever on the execution framework. And then we will provide you with the TKP verification service that's cheap and also secure by the Bitcoin network and also provide you with the Bitcoin bridge that's trustless that you can bridge over to the Bitcoin mainnet. So that it's a pretty safe and Bitcoin native an app specific uh, application, I would say. Yeah. I see. Uh, yeah, that's that's really cool. And so, th think this way. In in future, let's say you know, two years or one year down the line, we start seeing the influx of these Bitcoin games and Bitcoin apps, right? Uh, what is the community right now? Since you are more into the Bitcoin community than me, how does the community look like right now? Um, are they excited about such things or do they want to do something else or do they just want to hold Bitcoin? Because philosophically, when I was looking at the debates, when Ordinals came out, everyone was like, oh, Ordinals broke Bitcoin. But then there was like, that, that that's so weird because then there's no use case for Bitcoin apart from transactions. So wh what yeah. do you think, what does the community look like? For, uh, what does community think about it? Yeah. That's a really good and uh, realistic question. So, so here, you know, as builders in the Bitcoin ecosystem and also contributors to BitVM2, we really try to have the balance. So first we do respect the Bitcoin and then we don't, well, we, we are not against like a lot of modification, but we think that we, we only Basically, we only we will only modify the Bitcoin if it's really necessary. And then we also so that's why we we really focus on BitVM2, which does not need to have any soft fork or any modification on the current Bitcoin. And then we also will focus on how to really unlock a security, you know, value to do more cool stuff, right? To secure more layer tools, app chains, and then to verify more ZK applications, and then to also utilize, mobilize this idle assets trustlessly to serve as collateral or whatever in other ecosystem to also inject new blood to other ecosystem as well, right? So, so with with these so we we do want to unlock these potential but we also would we are we really keep in mind that we cannot really spam the bitcoin network so that's why we use bitvm2 and that's why we built fiamma gkp verification network so we will only ask bitcoin to do things that's all that's necessary so as you can see in our gkp verification layer most of the time when it's happy pass we don't we rarely do, we rarely interact with bitcoin only when challenge happen then you, you know there we there will be um interaction with bitcoin because bitcoin is typically more expensive and slow and then it's also similarly for our bitcoin bridge as well so only uh, so there might be some cost like risk like cost uh during happy pass but for the unhappy path when there's challenge happen that's only that's the time when bitcoin really needs to do the work so that's so with with that philosophy in mind we would unlock you know the both the security uh value and also the capital value of bitcoin uh trustlessly but also not really you know hurting the network or really um you know really messing up and then um messing up the miners and also more people in the community yeah that's that's actually pretty good and you know it would be it would unlock a lot of use cases and i think 
um, if Bitcoin community will be a lot more welcoming to these apps, they will see influx of, you know, like funding or, uh, you know, just uh, use cases, people using these apps. That would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, that, that's cool. Nice. Yeah, I think Aware would be also a big part uh, in it as well, right? So when we got more like, um, for instance, uh, Bitcoin games or whatever applications on Bitcoin, then we have a lot of data storage need, right? You cannot spam the Bitcoin. You only you only talk to Bitcoin when necessary, right? So um, that's why we also need Aware and also need, you know, TKP verification layer, Fiamma to really help scale. Uh, the network and also help you know bring more use cases to the new uh, to the Bitcoin network and also enable Bitcoin to talk to other ecosystem, but not really spamming or destroying the system. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think um, a, a lot of people need to understand that that what you know other applications or you know protocols built built for Bitcoin, it's not to destroy it. Or the philosophy of it it's to actually extend the functionality of bitcoin as a whole yeah definitely right because like when there's more use cases then uh miners can actually earn more fees actually mm -hmm. uh ordinals and brc20 exactly. and also babylon really create a lot of you know really you know increase the gas fee right so i think that um that's also important as well <laughs> Exactly. Um, I uh, This is what I had a conversation with a uh, Bitcoin Maxi and I'm like, it's completely okay, you know, if new things come in because it's ultimately uh, good for the ecosystem. So yeah, definitely agreed with you at, at all the points. Yeah, so with all of us, with Fiamma, Avail, and more player, we can really turn, you know, the Bitcoin in the foundational layer for the decentralized internet and also financial system, but without really, you know, putting too much troubles in the network. And I think this also should be the goal of Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin Maxis as well, right? So it's definitely it's the most secure and also valuable blockchain. So we definitely, it's great and we we, we can make more use of it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's let's move on a little bit on the you know Avail and Fiamma partnership. Uh, mm -hmm. How do? Well, I think we've already talked about you know how yeah. you guys are using Avail DA. Um, do you what what do you think about like you know tapping into the Avail ecosystem? How do you see maybe you can work alongside with other partners in our ecosystem? What do you what do you think um, around those things? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so for the Aval ecosystem, I think it's really cool. It has a lot of like East Layer 2s and a lot of other uh, projects as well. And I think that um, we can definitely partner more on uh, for, uh, with the project if they are interested in exploring opportunities in Bitcoin and, and BTC5, you know, and so so that's that will be a lot of interesting uh coll collaboration points as well so do you have uh, any like cool projects in mind that you think that would be a great partner with us uh -huh. we we have so many uh we have so <laughs> many and I, I i don't think like i can you know name them um in the podcast but i'll definitely drop your recommendations in, yeah. the, in the chat you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure, definitely. There will be a lot. I think. Yeah, I think that a lot of um, a lot of projects are really interested in getting into the Bitcoin ecosystem, or or at least getting the Bitcoin related assets as well nowadays. Um, so uh, we we've been like, for instance, we've been um, discussing with a lot of like Oracle projects or more projects that's more focused on Ethereum or other ecosystem. Now they're looking into you know partnering with us and doing some technical exploration uh, with us in the Bitwm2 and also in Bitcoin. So I do I do really uh, really appreciate and grateful that people are really paying more and more attention to Bitcoin. yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, okay. and then you know finally like I would just want to ask you, is if someone wants to, you know, connect to you, if they want to build on top of Yama, how they can connect, uh, what are the things where you can support them? And, um, you know, why someone should build on Fiamma chain? 
So that is like, you know, another question. Yeah. So why you should build on Fiamma? So basically, I think that um, uh, most of our direct partners would be um, like interoperability layer or like app chains or layer two or some games. Uh, this type of applications or more, you know, ingenious things that uh, we haven't mentioned. And the reason why you uh, that working with us would be a great idea is that we can really ensure that we will provide you with the most trustless and also most um, scalable and cheapest solutions uh, when you are trying to leverage the Bitcoin security, uh, the network security of Bitcoin and also try to uh, utilize Bitcoin assets because we have trusted Bitcoin bridge and we have the ZKP verification layer that's secured by Bitcoin network. So we would, we would really enable you to build anything on Bitcoin. That's really interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, so those were the major questions that I had for you. I think um, it was a really nice conversation. Do you have like some of the you know closing thoughts? What are you, um, what are you most excited for until the end of twenty twenty four? So I think we we are left with four months, close to four months. So what are the, like three months actually? Um, what are the major things that you want to see um, in twenty twenty four, especially for the Bitcoin ecosystem and anything in Web three? Yeah, so I really want to excited to see that uh, that we can really first we can really bridge you know Bitcoin trustlessly to other ecosystem, uh, to okay. Ethereum layer twos or Tones etc. Because I just found that Tone now for their number one DeFi it only have you know TVL that's slightly over a million, so a tiny bit of Bitcoin could really you know double or triple quadruple their TVL. So I think that a lot of ecosystem, they could really benefit a lot if we have a solution that can trustlessly bridge Bitcoin to them. And this this is, is still missing in the market, which is a little bit unbelievable. So yeah, so we are, we are we're trying to build it um, really hard and hopefully we can really uh, have it by the end of this year. Um, yeah. yeah. That's definitely nice. Um, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, so if you're interested in, uh, you know, giving us any feedback or any thoughts, just feel free to, uh, you know, reach out to me on my Twitter. Um, so basically my handle is Yovella. Oh, no, sorry. My handle is alpaca yovella. Yeah, alpaca the animal. Alpaca yovella. Yeah. So happy okay, to answer. I wanna, um, before, before we cut the call, I, uh, before we, not, not the call, but before we end the stream, I want to ask you, what is the mm -hmm. story behind the alpaca? Like, I, I see that's your name, that's your picture. <laughs> and when I, I send you uh, the This is the alpaca. Oh, that's so cute. So, yeah, so that's, I, that's me. Yeah, I like alpaca because I think that they're very cute, but they're very strong at the same time. So, yeah, oh, so you can also call me alpaca. Okay. I, I love it. So, um, when I posted in the, in the, you know, like when I, when I sent this to marketing team, and I'm like, this is a picture for the, you know, poster, and, and they're like, oh, that's so cute. Like, you know, there's an alpaca. And I'm like, is it a lemma or an alpaca? I'm like, it's an alpaca. Yeah. So yeah, That's definitely. <laughs> okay. okay, yeah. Nice yeah. to so have you. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. And... I also be in Singapore, and and then if you, uh, if you see me by any chance, you can say hi, Alpaca, or hi, Yovella. Yeah, anything works. For sure, for sure. I'll see you in Singapore. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, all right, guys, uh, thanks for joining in. Um, there are 1,000 people who are listening to us right now. It was a really wow. great talk about Fiamma, VM2. Definitely real nice. Give you know, Alpaca, Yovella a follow, and Fiamma Chain as well. And if you are building on top of them, just reach out to her. OK, OK. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>